Hello guys and welcome back to my channel. Today in this video I'm going to show you how to set up the TBS Crossfire Micro TX along with the TBS Crossfire Nano RX on a Taranis X90 Plus radio transmitter. Now if you're not already aware of this product, the TBS Crossfire Micro TX is a long range transmitter and it should allow you to reach much longer distances than using a regular receiver like the RXSR for example and recently also TBS released the Nano RX receiver. This is the special edition which comes also with this immortal antenna but I just want to show you how small this receiver is and it's actually smaller than the RXSR and it will allow you to reach distances up to 40 kilometers on the paper and it's pretty impressive. So let's start the setup procedure. In order to use the TBS Crossfire Micro TX, you will have to run at least firmware 2.2.0. In order to check which version your Taranis is currently running, long press the menu button, then press the page until you reach the version. And you can see that right now I'm flashed with version 2.2.1, which is the latest version. So now I'm going to show you how to update the firmware of your Taranis. First go to OpenTX website, go to downloads, and what you should look for is the OpenTX 2.2, the latest version is 2.2.1 from last December. Click it and then if you have a Mac like me, open the Mac app and you also have a Windows installer. Then install the relevant file for you, open it up, go to file, download and download firmware. Save it on your desktop or wherever you want to save it and also download the SD contents it will lead you to this website over here and download the latest file. The latest one is version 0.0.13. The next thing that you should do is to turn on your Taranis on bootloader mode. In order to do so, press the Yo and Roll trim buttons and turn on your Taranis. Now you can see we are on the bootloader mode. Then connect the mini USB cable to this port over here and connect the other end to your computer. Then click the right firmware to radio button. The file that you already downloaded will be auto selected. If not, press load and load it from where you saved it. And then hit write to TX. I'm not going to do it because I've already done it. So after that, it wouldn't take long and you're going to receive a confirmation message that the new firmware was flashed. Then the second thing that you should do after you downloaded the contents of the SD card, you can see this right now. Two drives were discovered after I connected the Taranis. One is named with no name and the other one is Taranis. Don't worry about these files. Head over to the no name directory and just overwrite the entire contents of the SD card with the new files that were downloaded. The next thing that you should do in order to update the firmware of the bootloader is to copy the file that you downloaded from the OpenTX companion. You have to make sure it has less than nine characters I named it OpenTX bin and copy it to the firmware directory on the SD card. Then in order to update the bootloader, turn on your Taranis, long press the menu button and under SDHC card, go to firmware and long press enter on the OpenTX bin. It will ask you if to flash the bootloader, press OK and then your bootloader is going to be updated to the latest version. In order to make sure it was flashed with the latest version, turn on your Taranis on bootloader mode and make sure that Taranis bootloader is now 2.2.1. The next thing that you need to do is to update the firmware of the Crossfire Micro Transmitter to its latest version. Unfortunately, they don't have a Mac configurator, so we'll have to do it with a PC. Head over to TBS website and download and install the TBS Agent Companion. In order to update it, you will need to use a micro USB cable, connect the micro USB end to the transmitter, then connect it to your computer. You can see that it discovered the TBS Crossfire Micro TX, and you can see the LED indicator is also on. You can choose the version that you would like to flash. I'm going to use the latest version, which is 2.24 at the moment, and hit update. You can see that right now the LED indicator is flashing because we're updating the transmitter and we also have a progress bar over here so let's wait for it to finish you can see that now the update procedure is finished it's running a couple of updates also for the rx because the tx also is in charge of updating the rx and i'm going to show you how it works later now after your taranis has been upgraded to its latest version and also the tbs crossfire micro transmitter 
connect the TBS microtransmitter just by placing it here on this module, make sure it's properly secured. And you can either use the included antenna and I actually got myself this diamond antenna, which I'm going to use and make sure it's connected. After connecting the module, you can see that now the Taranis is on, but the light indicator is not working. And that's because you have to make sure that the external module is enabled. And I've already done it on another module, the Crossfire module. And you can see after this module is selected, now the light indicator is present. So in order to enable the external transmitter, go to menu under module setup, turn off your internal RF and make sure that the external RF is chosen under mode crossfire. You can see before it was off and now also the LED indicator is off because it's not getting any power. And after turning it on to crossfire channels one to 16, now it's on again. You know to configure the TBS crossfire micro, long press the menu button, go to the SDHC card page and under crossfire, run the crossfire Lua script, long press it, hit execute, and now you can see it recognizes the crossfire micro TX, press enter, and now you can configure it. So you can set the maximum power, you can set it between 25 and 100, and you can also see the firmware that we are running. The frequency can also be changed and it can also perform a factory reset. Before I'm going to show you how the binding procedure works, I'm going to go with you over the connections of the TBS Crossfire Nano receiver and also over the configuration in Betaflight. The next thing that you need to do is to connect the receiver. In order to do so, you will have to use these four ports over here. The left connector is the ground, then plus five volts, channel one and channel two. You will need to connect these ports to a free UART port on the board and you will have to make sure that the board is flashed with at least Betaflight 3.2.0 and above. So you need to connect it to the ground plus 5 volts and the TX and the RX. It actually doesn't matter if you're going to connect the channel 1 or the channel 2 to the RX or the TX because you will be able to configure it later on the setup menu of the receiver. If your board has these four pins layout, it's going to be very easy to connect it. Just solder this adapter in this manner and just make sure that when you solder these pins not to short anything on the top of the board. Now the nano receiver is connected to the board I'm actually going to use this receiver with. You can see it connected to the ground, plus 5 volt, and to the R3 and T3 UART ports. The next thing we need to do is to bind this receiver. If the receiver had never been bound before, it's going to be automatically entered into bind mode after powering up the receiver. If not, you will have to short press this button over here on the receiver in order to enter bind mode. Once the LED indicator is going to slowly flash, it means that the receiver is on bind mode. So let's power it up. By the way, make sure that the antenna is connected and you can see that the LED indicator is slowly flashing. The next thing you need to do is to go into the Lua script. So hold the menu button, go to the SDHC card, crossfire, execute the script, press enter, hit binding, and it asks you now if you want to update the receiver because its version is updated. Let's update it. And now the TX is updating the RX, and you can see by the way, now this LED indicator is solid, which means that the bind is complete. Now we are updating the receiver. Now after it shows update okay, we can see also we have a solid green light, which means the binding procedure was good. Now we can see the XF Nano RX in our menu. We can configure this receiver. So just press enter. And somehow the default settings were here where output one or SBUS, then channel one, three, and four. The ones I need to, to change are the output one and two, which are connected to the RX and the TX. So I'm going to configure the output one to crossfire the X, the two to the RX. The last thing we need to do in order to display the RSSI on our RSD is to go all the way down to channel 12 and configure it to LQ. And this is going to make sure that the quality of the signal is going to be outputted on channel 12. Then press exit, the settings are saved and we are good to go. You can see by the way, we can see here the RSSI signal and if I'm going to disconnect the receiver, telemetry lost. it lost the telemetry and you can see also on the back that the LED indicator is flashing and once I re reconnect the receiver, 
Telemetry recovered. Telemetry recovered automatically and also the LED indicator is solid again. The last thing we need to do is to configure the flight controller on Betaflight. Again, make sure it's flashed with at least Betaflight 3.2.0. This one is flashed with Betaflight 3.3.0. And go to the ports, enable Serial RX on the port that you used. Then go to the settings and under receiver, make sure that Serial Best Receiver is chosen. And the Serial Receiver Provider is CRSF, which stands for Crossfire. And now you can see that when I'm moving the sticks, we are getting all the correct commands. And also over here, you can see that auxiliary 8 is shows 2000. This is our RSSI indicator. And currently it's on its highest level because I'm close to the receiver. And hopefully it's going to stay that way also when I'm going to get away from it. So now everything is good to go. I'm just going to shortly overview what we've done. First update the Taranis to its latest OpenTX 2.2.1 firmware then update the firmware of the crossfire micro transmitter connect the receiver to the board and make sure you are running at least beta flight 3.2.0 go through the binding procedure update the rigs and then just configure the relevant ports on beta flight so if everything goes smoothly i think it should take you about 15 minutes or so and hopefully this little guide will help you out as always, I thank you for watching my video. I hope you enjoyed it and you find it useful. If you have any questions about the binding procedure or how to use this module, feel free to ask it in the comment section below. Don't forget to leave a thumbs up if you like this video and consider subscribing to my channel if you're not already subscribed. See you on my next videos and goodbye.